Hey guys, Drifter here. Have you ever played a game that felt good in most aspects, but had a vibe problem that you couldn't quite put your finger on? Maybe the game had excellent gunplay and hit detection, but still felt weird? You die instantly to sniper rifles, but enemies seem to be bullet sponges? Or you can't quite seem to get a handle on the combat flow? Well, you might be experiencing the moderate time to kill problem. It's been a while since we've done some proper game science here, but this was a topic that was too perfect. I just couldn't pass it up. And a huge part of what we're gonna be doing in this video is summarizing a thesis research paper by game design student, Nathan S. Ernst. I link that paper down there below if you wanna read along with me, but he actually reached out to me a few months ago and requested help recruiting members from my community to help him go do some game science. It was a lot like the old school in-depth episode testing that we used to live stream on Twitch and sometimes on YouTube. And I wanted to say thank you to my community members that hopped over to his private Discord and volunteered their time and efforts for a variety of tests, not all of which I know were fun. If you'd like to be a part of a community like this, then you should consider joining my Discord though. It's professionally moderated, has a thriving community that helps influence upcoming projects, and I'm very easy to reach there. But let's jump into the science now and define some terms that are gonna be helpful later on in the research. Time to kill in this paper is defined as the theoretical minimum time to kill. This is the exact same TTK stat that I and other YouTubers like Exclusive Ace and JGod have been using for decades now to describe how quickly you can kill a person in Call of Duty. The formula that calculates this is very simple. T times N minus one equals your TTK, whereas T is the time between shots, typically measured in frames or milliseconds, and N is the number of shots to kill. We do N minus one because that first shot that you hit is what starts the timer, so it always happens at zero milliseconds. And according to the theories presented in this paper, time to kill is not just an element of any particular weapon in these games, but also an overarching feature of the game itself games tend to balance themselves around the average TTK of the arsenal in the game. Of note, this paper did not include shotguns and sniper rifles in their time to kill calculations because those weapons are almost always zero and would wildly skew the data here. So for example, in Arma or Squad, you die almost immediately upon being shot, Call of Duty has a moderate time to kill, you live about three to 500 milliseconds, or Halo or Apex Legends can be over a thousand milliseconds or in multiple seconds, so they can be quite slow. The skill balance of each game revolves around this measurement. For example, an Insurgency Sandstorm and Armor Reforger combine their lethal weapons with very high recoil, slow aiming times, and large amounts of aim sway. This creates a dynamic where any particular shot from a weapon is highly lethal, but landing shots is difficult. Likewise, games like Halo, Apex Legends, and Destiny have very slow time to kill, often approaching a whole second, but they tend to have accessible gunplay that features low recoil, little aim sway, snappy weapons. It's very easy to track your target. And this dynamic being created is one of being able to maintain aim on a target over a longer period of time. There are a couple of game balance philosophies presented early on in the paper, which we'll loop back to, such as the balance between multiple strategies, where they define in PvP games that are designed to support multiple strategies and paths to victory. So if the game is balanced, each strategy can be viable and competitive with other strategies, given equal player skill. There's balance between game objects, the loot, the weapons, the armor pieces, the tacticals you have, how easy they are to acquire, how spammable they are, what skill it requires to use them, situational, etc., rarity, cost. And there's balance between initial starting conditions. Starting somebody out fully loaded in Battle Royale is unfair compared to the guy who has to land in PUBG naked and fight people with his fist and go scrap for some loot. Those would be unfair starting conditions. They also present some other game balance options, such as the viable options measuring, which means lots of meaningful choices are presented to the player, so that the player should be presented with enough context to allow them to use strategy to make those choices. And also the concept of fairness, which is players of equal skill should have roughly an equal chance at winning, even though they might start the game with different sets of options, different characters, different abilities, different weapon loadouts, platforms, etc. And the paper includes a lot more game theory, but to save you some time, the author really focuses in on tactical or mechanical actions. A tactical behavior is one in which the player plans ahead and executes that plan. It is one of premonition and strategy. It's one of those tools available to the player to gain an upper hand. 
Uh, a mechanical behavior, however, is one that relies on a player's ability to physically interact with the game to achieve success. It is their reaction time, their physical strength, or precision of the movement that, of their aiming that allows them to gain an upper hand in combat. And basically every game makes some combination of these two. They kind of exist on a spectrum somewhere, and it just depends on if it's closer to being tactical or closer to being mechanical. The next extremely fun topic is an exploration of human reaction time. You may not know this, but the brain's ability to process information and send signals to your hands is not instant. The reaction time between when your brain sees something and when you actually take an action to do it can vary from person to person, but the total time is a little bit longer than you might think. The reason you don't feel this in your day-to-day -day life, bumbling around, is that your brain is also kind of doing a little bit of pre-processing and running a future predictions model to predict the future about what you're doing right now. So when your brain is catching a baseball out of the air, it's not trying to track the baseball and put itself uh, in the path, it's trying to predict where it's going to be in the future and move your arm toward that future destination. So you don't notice this as much, but the reality is that the average human reaction time in a young, healthy adult, uh, visual reaction time is about 250 milliseconds, plus or minus 20 milliseconds. And the average reaction time to audio stimuli is approximately 225 milliseconds, plus or minus 17. So with a little bit of wiggle room there, we actually respond a little bit faster to sound than we do to visual information. And the author says in the paper, quote, reaction time serves as a fundamental role in how players interact with games and the various choices they can and will make. Thus, any design choices regarding possible player choices must also consider this, and this relationship can create a lack of viable choices. Which leads us to the thesis statement, the thing this paper is actually testing and getting back onto the topic of the moderate time to kill soon, I promise. The thesis statement is, a first-person shooter with a moderate time to kill of between 300 and 500 milliseconds is fundamentally imbalanced. It inherits the problems from the longer and shorter TTK games while solving neither. The moderate TTK creates strict metas where there are very few viable options available for players to succeed. And the moderate TTK fails to appropriately reward either a tactical or mechanical behavior set due to human reaction time. Instead, it kind of punishes both, creating a catch-22 of game design where no viable or engaging gameplay choices exist. And the question that we're trying to answer in this entire thesis is if player behavior changes between games that have different times to kill. Like, will my behavior as a player change when I'm playing a fast TTK game versus a slow TTK game, and that was the crux of the research uh, conducted for this thesis. The next part of the paper is very long, very large, it goes on for a long time, studying actual game time to kills and games that support different ranges of TTK, and there's some fascinating graphs about the TTKs across genres, there's some fascinating graphs about the time to kills across games like Call of Duty. In this one in particular, you can see that the time to kill in Call of Duty games has gradually been increasing over time, and you can take a look at the Battlefield franchise as well. And now, time for the testing. How did this science occur? The paper's author requested 10 players play a total of five games together. These were games that were already released, such as Black Ops Cold War and Overwatch. The author points out that the different FPS games vary wildly in their time to kill, with Cold War being slower, sorry, faster time to kill, and Overwatch being considerably slower time to kill. They played some normal games in the first set of data, then played games with faster time to kill, like we went into the game settings, like into your custom games, we changed the player health to radically change the time to kill. They played some with faster time to kill, like hardcore mode. And then they played some with a massively increased time to kill, to give a slow time to kill. So kind of like what we would call heavy mode or extra, where you have like five, 600 health and multiplayer, stuff like that. So we have normal, fast, and slow time to kill games. After this, the author moves on to collecting data about player actions and separates them into tactical and mechanical categories. For example, this particular chart defines the tactical actions of each game, and skimming through, you can see that it heavily favors planning ahead. Tactical actions include pre-aiming a corner, holding a piece of cover, taking a power position, swapping back to a tactical weapon, or healing an ally or using certain abilities in Overwatch. The next chart is a similar list of mechanical actions. You can see that mechanical actions include jump shotting, sliding, sticking an enemy with a simtex, or use of almost anything lethal. Uh, certain special abilities in Overwatch also trigger this, and all of these actions were actually logged and analyzed. Now this is the insane part. So this man had recordings of 
all these different people's perspectives across all these different games and went through frame by frame counting instances of tactical or mechanical behavior, truly like an old school in-depth episode where you're counting frames until your brain melts. So God bless you for that one. I know it wasn't fun. Uh, but all of the actions were logged and set for analysis. They were analyzed in ratios between each other, so tactical actions per mechanical actions, and then the mean of those across all of the people across all of the games to see if there was a change in total player behavior. And, well, there was. As it turns out, the changes of in player behavior between different sets of TTK was dramatic, even if they were playing the same game. In the shorter TTK sets, players greatly favored tactical actions, like planning ahead. Players would pre-aim corners more, pre-ADS, seek out power positions, and they would prep tactical equipment for use more frequently. In longer TTK games, players tended to play much more aggressively, and they also relied a lot more on their mechanical skills. They didn't pre-aim as much, but they jumped more often, they would push fights more often, and were generally much more active and mobile doing things during fights themselves. As a quote from the paper, some interesting elements of balance can be drawn from the testing. Notably, higher TTK leads to increased power of staying together as a team. Solo play is punished, and flanks are less effective. Shorter TTK was the opposite, with a well-executed flank having a higher likelihood of success. Use of cover increased in shorter TTK games, as did the use of additional tools such as tactical or lethal equipment. Aggressive rushing was less likely to succeed with the slower TTK as well, so players often remarked upon this in the post-match surveys and that the observations of the footage back this up. The key takeaways that can help the designers of multiplayer FPS games are that they should design their games around the behavior they want to reward in players for exhibiting and punishing the behaviors they don't want players to engage in. However, some games attempt to have a have your cake and eat it too situation trying to strike right down the middle with moderate time to kill, which inherently creates imbalance due to certain unavoidable problems, which finally we're at the moderate TTK problem. It took forever to get here, but the science behind it is important. As the paper says in its summary section, I'm going to quote, the crux of all the problems with moderate time to kill is one thing, human reaction time. Human reaction time creates problems with weapon balance, multi-person engagements, and interesting player choices. Since human reaction time is a factor that exists outside of the game and cannot be changed by developers, this creates balance problems that cannot be fixed, and instead, the moderate TTK must be avoided to avoid these problems. The author's recommendation is that developers keep this dynamic in mind when they're building their games. Once the developer knows what kind of game they want to build, then they need to scale that TTK to fit the game and the goals that they have for the players. If you're making a really smart, big brain tactical game, you actually should have a faster time to kill because those tactics aren't going to be relevant and players aren't going to engage in them in longer time to kill games. Similarly, if you're making a raw mechanical skill game like Halo or Apex Legends, for example, you want to have that longer time to kill because you want to have an opportunity for players to express their mechanical skill. If you make it too short, you're just getting picks and dying instantly, and the skill is how fast can I flick left or right like Counter-Strike, which is not what people want. Towards the end of the paper, there was a recommendation, a sort of breakdown of TTK ranges. Uh, from 0 to 149 milliseconds was considered very fast. Uh, that's a very tactical behavior for milsim and tactical shooters. Anything uh, between 150 and about 300 milliseconds is regular fast. That's casual shooters, tactical-like, somewhat tactical. Call of Duty would probably be closer in that zone. Uh, and the 3 to 500 millisecond range is the moderate time to kill, which is neither tactical nor mechanical, and there are no recommended games for it. Uh, above that, we have 5 to 750, which is considered slow time to kill. That works really well in Battle Royale and Arena shooters. Uh, relies mostly on mechanical skill. And then at above 750 milliseconds, it's pretty much all mechanical skill. And we're only looking at Battle Royales or Arena shooters like Halo or Apex Legends or something like that. So the next time your game is feeling weird, when there's a vibes problem, ask yourself two questions. One, does this game rely on tactical or mechanical skill? And two, what is this game's time to kill? Because if the time to kill is very short, the game should lean on tactical skills like Counter-Strike. If the game is very long, the game should lean on mechanical skills like Apex Legends. 
If games try to be somewhere in the middle, then you should prepare yourself for the vibes to be kind of off because it's difficult to balance and design games around a moderate time to kill. Moderate time to kill just doesn't seem to be the way to go in FPS games, at least according to this research. Guys, that's all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Do check out the original paper below and the Discord community. Drifter out.